Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly update, the Tuesday edition. Hope everybody uh, had a good day of trading. Uh, let's talk, we'll talk about the pivots in a second. We're, we're kind of back to uh, where we were about a couple of weeks ago, uh, kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And last night, I was very, very bullish, okay? Uh, obviously, the only thing stopping from a very, very bullish day was confirmation. And we talked about what the bulls needed to do on the NASDAQ 100 to reclaim this 261 area. It obviously never did that. Uh, what made it worse today, and this is kind of, if you saw a little bit of kind of non- aggression towards one side or the other, you, you probably weren't right. You probably weren't crazy. You were just seeing the reality. And we're kind of stuck in the middle of these two channels here uh, for the last couple of days, uh, not taking out the highs, not taking out the lows. Uh, eventually, something has to give. Now, probably something will give uh, tomorrow. And if you look at a lot of names, you'll quickly see a cl clear reflection of kind of what we are seeing in the queues. So for example, the upside still needs that 261, and now the downside still needs this 256. So those are the levels, okay? Something is gonna break, um, whether it's gonna break tomorrow, the next day, but something has to give, okay? Uh, it's a pretty clear definitive sign. The longer we stay in that channel, the longer these stocks are gonna find, uh, are gonna put yourself in a position that you're either going to try to squeeze water out of a rock, and we had this conversation several weeks ago, uh, or you're going to patiently sit it, well, I don't wanna say sit it out, because there's other uh, pretty good opportunities that are outside of the queues, and we'll get to them in a second. But I, I think the key for tomorrow's session is to kind of avoid beta. In a weird way, I, well, I don't wanna say that altogether, but in a weird way, there's a lot more value uh, tomorrow probably gonna be in the first hour of the day in other places than in beta. Now, if Qs start building below 256, then we're gonna clearly start looking at the channels to the downside. Uh, AMD, really good earnings report. Uh, the stock has been rocketing uh, over the last se several weeks. If we start seeing uh, everything being pulled up, we'll obviously reevaluate. But this is the key level for tomorrow, guys. I, I can't uh, emphasize how important it is. If the Qs start failing, uh, below this 256 area, we're going to at least challenge uh, the previous low of, of uh, July 24th. So tomorrow's going to be very, very important. I, I'm definitely leaning uh, sell bias uh, to the down, well, sell bias to the downside, obviously on beta. But there's other groups that are looking pretty good, uh, especially kind of the, I don't want to say the lower price names, but the mid tier price names. Uh, and if you find yourself looking at channels, for example, and say to yourself, well, how come there was nothing really getting going for the exception of Tesla around lunchtime? You'll quickly see. I mean, if you look at all these channels, again, everything's stuck. Facebook stuck in the middle of the range. Uh, NVIDIA stuck in the middle of the range. Um, you have Apple, one of the clearest ones that potentially could crack tomorrow first. You can clearly see that the only uh, the only problem with Apple, names like Apple and Amazon that you want to kind of avoid getting aggressive on the sell side, they're, they're going to report in a couple of days. So there's going to be obviously uh, dip buyers in those names, and obviously for the right reasons. Amazon is a beast of a company. Uh, Apple has more money than God, right? So there's always going to be dip buyers. So, so anything that you are going to uh, concentrate tomorrow on the downside, make sure those names are already reported, okay? Uh, make sure those channels are clear, and make sure above anything else, the daily charts are confirming down. Without the daily charts confirming down, I don't care how good it looks on the 60 minute channel, or whatever interval you're trading, you're gonna have an impossible time getting price uh, depreciation if the daily channel doesn't compete. But here's the good news, okay? The good news is there's two couple things you can do. Number one, uh, you can sit there and pout and try to squeeze water out of a rock on names, uh, many names that haven't confirmed downward yet daily, uh, or you could look at other areas. I started going through a bunch of charts and I noticed a bunch, and I, and I, I noticed a group that was very, very clean. Uh, and that was the pot stocks. Now again, a lot of people look at the pot stocks and say to themselves, well, they're always going to disappoint you, right? And they probably will, okay? They had their shot. With all those states 
for the last several years legalizing marijuana, or at least quote unquote medical marijuana, they really had a chance to be the next big thing, right? And, and you look at these stocks, they still, you know, macro wise, they look like crap, but good option flow in a lot of names like Tilray, right? Tilray, uh, CGC, for example, uh, Kronos, for example. So they actually look pretty good for tomorrow. In a, in a weird way, that is the value. And the most amazing part about it is I wouldn't be shocked, right? Either if they, if they go and I wouldn't be shocked that they fail, but at least we have an area where it is creating value versus, for example, a stock, like for example, like a Facebook, and you're trying to say, so well, it's gonna go lower. Well, then you have all these moving averages still rising support to get through. So I think you have to find the names that are very, very at least clean and wait for the confirmation. So for example, Tilray, right, traded today, right to the 50 day, if it confirms and reclaims the 50 day, should go higher. Crone, same thing. If it, it traded right to uh, the linear regression line, if it confirms the linear regression line tomorrow, it should go higher and on and on and on. Uh, even names like INSG today, and again, you could see these, these are not the normal names uh, that I trade, but again, you can't just sit there and moan and groan uh, if your stocks are not going to be in vogue for the next day or they're not going to be as aggressively uh, setting up for the next day. You have to kind of look and have to maneuver around. So INSG is another name I was watching today, very, very strong move. The only reason it stopped today because it hit the linear regression line. You can see this double top in the linear regression. So if it reclaims the linear regression, it's gonna go higher. We also started seeing good option flow. Uh, there were buyers of, I think it was the August uh, $20 calls. So there, there are definitely areas that look very, very good. Again, is this one of those days you're gonna turn around tomorrow and say, wow, this is gonna be a great day? You know, I'll be surprised. Right, I'll be surprised, but at least we are mentally preparing for what we're seeing. Yes, are these uh, are the pot stocks looking pretty good? Absolutely, they need to confirm. A couple other names look pretty good, absolutely. But again, it's not the prototypical day. Let's watch Netflix, let's watch Tesla, let's watch this one, let's watch that one. Uh, even the some of the names that look good to the downside, for example, Apple. Um, they do have to confirm. And the one thing, again, like I, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, the one thing you have to keep in the back of your head, Apple is coming out with earnings. So there's going to be dip buys. So again, is it going to be the easiest short coming out of a channel? Probably not. So uh, at least for tomorrow, you know, you have to curb down your expectations. I think that's very, very important. Uh, when you have no expectations, you have no disappointments. Uh, you have to have a clear head, open mind to trade both sides of the market. And at least we are prepared, right? At least we are mentally prepared for tomorrow. Uh, don't expect anything. And if these things, especially the pots and this, that, the other thing, they do confirm, cool. We'll get some, you know, we'll get some cash flow and we'll move on to the next day. The key to this business, especially uh, when you are trading beta, is expansion. Okay, you need expansion channels. And when you look at stocks, for example, again, you could go through all of them. Uh, Tesla definitely uh, was at least a shining star today. Again, you could see Tesla, right? Doesn't have a lot, you know, again, look, could it get hit? You know, if it's 20, 30 dollars, of course, but it's gonna be challenging uh, after especially an opening range high because this channel is gonna rise and then you're gonna need a, an opening range move. So we're kind of set up tomorrow. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm pretty much 60, 40 sell bias just because we kind of failed at uh, 61 level today on the Qs. But again, the one thing that uh, this market has now showed me for, you know, for a very, very long time, again, you could have an opinion and the market is so crazy, it could trade completely the opposite way uh, from your opinion. Again, that's why we say it all the time. It's okay to be wrong theoretically with your sentiment and your, uh, and your game plan. Just don't be a stubborn mule, right? Don't be a stubborn mule uh, and be wrong financially. Everything else, who cares? It's not about being right or wrong. Uh, it's about staying in business, and that's the most amazing part. Uh, if you look at today's session, uh, again, there, there was some decent moves, right? Tesla was definitely... Uh, at least the move for me uh, in the middle of the day, literally close to lunchtime. And everything else was just kind of dry. I mean, really, really dry. Um, you know, I traded Disney. I'll, you know, we'll show you the pivots in a second. I traded Disney. I, I thought of a good, you know, I thought of a good level. Um, I traded Disney, went down like 35, 40 cents, nothing. You know, I covered a third, broke even on the balance. Uh, I bought Boeing. It stalled out, right? I sold it for a cup of coffee gain. Did absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, I had a couple of flat trades with some smaller names. So I was like, ugh, you know, this is getting kind of stale. And finally, we'll talk to me, we'll talk about Tesla in a second. Some pretty good cash flow uh, at lunchtime that kind of salvaged the day. But but again, 
what we saw today, and again, you have to be an adult about it, okay? If you, if you are you know, an adrenaline junkie tomorrow, I guarantee you, you're gonna get, you're gonna get murdered, okay? You're gonna get so chopped up unless you're chasing some $200, uh, some $2 stock up 30, 300% for some action. Um, you, you have to kind of take everything uh, every single day with a grain of salt. Again, like I say every day, there's areas of the market to push and there's areas of the market to kind of scale back. I give you my word, this is not me giving you some cryptic uh, alternate universe advice. You got to scale down size tomorrow. You got to trade less, wait for value and kind of make it to the next uh, trading day. So uh, let's talk about today's session. Uh, again, if it was fine. It, it was nothing... You know, usually we turn around and say, wow, well, you know, some really good stuff is going, yeah, it was fine. I, I think that's the best way of saying it. Uh, that was fine. So uh, Square, again, you can see nothing, you know, nothing really went. I mean, you could, you could see this, uh, 126.80, 127 on Square, nothing, right? 126.80, 127, went to 27.53 and completely just fell out of bed. Nothing going on there. Uh, Baba never got close. Uh, to the 253 level. Peloton actually did pretty good. Uh, 64 needs to build. Uh, nice pop on Peloton. This is one actually of the very few ones that actually did okay, right? Took out the 64, actually traded almost to 67. Really nice move there. You know, really nice move there on Peloton. Netflix never got to 498. Space got, never got to 26. I actually like Space tomorrow uh, on the short side if they confirm a, cha uh, if they confirm a cha channel to the downside. Uh, they came out with some news today about like 250 grand to fly to God knows where Pluto. Uh, wasn't really, you know, wasn't really anything exciting. They sold off a of stock. Uh, Roku never got to uh, 57. And this is, and this is, this was, I mean, basically my, my, you know, my day. I mean, I had some, you know, I, I took some cash flow on Disney, but this is my day. Uh, you know, Tesla, if they can shut off the, sh shake off the downgrade, and that's exactly what they did today. Uh, 1550 needs to build and it could spike. And, you know, Tesla d does its thing. I, you know, I did think it was going to get to, um, I did think it was going to get to 1575. It didn't quite make it to 1575. Uh, but again, you know, here is, you know, here is the pivot right here. Here was the, you know, for, uh, the, the big macro pivot, 1550 and it traded up to 1565. So again, listen, beggars can't be choosers. The trade was fine. Um, let that be your worst trade. Let, let Tesla, you know, let Tesla five, six, seven, 15 points be your absolute worst trade. But again, was it that home run rock star Tesla trade that we want? Of course not. Okay, but again, it really does show you kind of a condensed version of what we saw uh, today. Again, not that much juice, uh, despite a really impressive job, uh, you know, kind of putting a downgrade to the side. Uh, LMND was a great pivot yesterday, 74 and change. Today, same thing, 71. If it builds below, can flush. Here was LMND. Right here was LMND. So here was the 71. Took out 71. Uh, went to 66. Just a big, you know, big beautiful move the last two days on LMND. So that was fine. Uh, shop, you know, shop took out 108. Went to 114. They report tomorrow, and that's it. You know, that's basically it there. Uh, Rumble never have put in a second, uh, a second, um, second entry. It took out the 22. You know, traded to 22.69, and that's it. Went straight down from there. Uh, did absolutely nothing. Uh, Disney, yeah, here's kind of what I'm, yeah, Google never got up there. Uh, so I short Disney, right? I short Disney. It goes down to like 1460s. That's it. That's it. I mean, that's it. There was no follow through uh, whatsoever. Uh, sneaky, again, this was also a, a macro sneaky pivot. 1550 was macro on Tesla, but 1534, 1533 was the big area here. Obviously a bigger move there. Again, stay patient. Again, not a lot of value, that prototypical value we had. Uh, LMD, uh, and again, you know, I was excited about Tesla. I thought it was going to run up, you know, run up huge. And, you know, it ran up. I was, it was okay with it. But again, not the trade that... Uh, we want it, but the trade that we got, so it was okay. So you know, going into tomorrow, you know, again, I'm gonna stick to uh, I'm gonna stick to the themes that we talked about uh, this evening. Uh, I don't have a lot of you know, I don't have a lot of conviction for tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I think we have to do our best to kind of look at alternative plays, like we saw option flow again, again, just an example. You know, GMW, just like, just just me talking about. Uh, small cap stocks getting option flow. You know, this thing, uh, we saw a buyer come in for 9,000 
of uh, you know 9,000 of next month's uh, $3 calls. And this thing exploded up like 20, 25 cents. The, 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 uh, that's where, you know, that's kind of where the subsidized money, subsidized uh, cash flow is right now. So we'll watch for that. We'll obviously watch for balance plays tomorrow. But, it, but again, if you are trading exactly the same speed every single day, you're really going to have a very aggressive uh, reality uh, fall into your lap. So again, control your emotions. Uh, again, you don't need to trade every single day. And if you are trading, understand your landscape tear down right tear down be smarter okay and be an adult guys have a great night i'll see you tomorrow. congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading you're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire want daily trade ideas directly from dan straight off his personal watch list unlock our free ps60 vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.